This video will describe the arthroscopic treatment of calcific rotator cuff tendonitis. Calcific rotator cuff tendonitis involves a process of calcification as well as tendon degeneration near the rotator cuff insertion. This typically leads to shoulder pain as well as decreased range of motion in patients that are affected by this disorder. This typically occurs in patients between the ages of 30 and 60 years of age and affects females more than males. The etiology, however, is unknown. There are three described stages of calcification. The first stage, which is also termed precalcific stage, involves the fibrocartilaginous metaplasia of the rotator cuff tendon, and this is typically pain-free for the patients. The second stage, which is described as the calcific stage, is further broken down into three phases. The first of these phases is the formative phase in which there is a cell-mediated calcific deposits which are formed. The second phase is the resting phase which lacks inflammation. And finally, the resorptive phase involves phagocytic resorption and vascular infiltration. And this is typically the most painful stage within calcification. And then finally, the third stage is known as the post-calcific stage. So now I'll present a patient example. This is a 66-year-old female who has a one-year history of shoulder pain. This was insidious onset, and the patient tried non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, physical therapy, as well as a corticosteroid injection prior to presentation in my office. On physical examination, she had tenderness to palpation over the greater tuberosity of the shoulder, and her range of motion was relatively preserved with forward elevation of 170 degrees, abduction slightly limited at 90 degrees, external rotation to 60 degrees, and internal rotation also slightly limited to T10. Now, however, her strength was very well preserved. She had 5 out of 5 strength in both the supraspinatus and infraspinatus rotator cuffs and a negative belly press. However, she did demonstrate positive impingement testing maneuvers. Plain film radiographs, which include an AP radiograph on the left and an axillary radiograph on the right, demonstrates a large calcific deposit, which is denoted by the arrow in both pictures. Now, based on the location of this calcification, this appears to be predominantly within the posterior superior rotator cuff, most likely involving the infraspinatus. An MRI was performed on this patient and on these coronal reconstructions, you can see the large calcification denoted by the arrowhead as we scroll from anterior to posterior and posterior to anterior. You can also see the associated subacromial bursitis. Here is the axillary reconstructions, and again, you can see the calcification predominantly in the posterior superior aspect of the rotator cuff. Arthroscopically, this is how it looks. This is a view of the shoulder from the posterior portal. And here you can see a spinal needle being entered in from a lateral portal to allow for localization of this calcific deposit. As you can see, as we poke away at the area of the diseased tendon, there is release of the calcific deposit. An 11 blade arthroscopic knife is then inserted into the lateral portal and is punctured through the area of the rotator cuff and you can see significant egress of the liquefied calcific deposit. The knife is utilized in order to incise the rotator cuff in line with the tendon fibers to not overly disrupt the rotator cuff tendon. The arthroscopic shaver is then introduced into the shoulder in order to remove the liquefied calcific debris and as we continue to clean out this area of calcific deposit, you begin to visualize the rotator cuff tendon. And as you can see, there is not only liquefied tendon and liquefied calcification, but you can also see that there is hardened calcification within the rotator cuff tendon. Further pressure on the rotator cuff demonstrates continued egress and evacuation of the underlying calcific debris which is further debrided with the arthroscopic shaver. Here again, this demonstrates the abundant calcific debris, which is embedded and ingrained within the rotator cuff substance and the rotator cuff tendon. This is a view of the rotator cuff tendon after a complete resection and removal of the calcific debris. 
and repair of the rotator cuff tendon back down to the greater tuberosity. Post-operative radiographs obtained approximately one week after surgery demonstrate complete removal of the prior calcific debris and deposit that was noted on the preoperative x-ray.